on my rear end parts, I figured I'm gonna build a gas tank. So I think the best place to put it is gonna be under our seat. The battery's gonna be on that side. Get rid of all this electric stuff. I'm assuming this is from like 2002. Yep. So this is where I want my fuel tank right here and we could always do one on the other side as well to equal it out But I calculated it and it's gonna be uh, 6.9 gallons, which you know should be about a hundred to 150 miles range For the gas tank I'm just using two sheets of aluminum and I'm gonna bend them to create a more visually appealing gas tank Also, it helps minimize welding time. Not that I have a problem with welding I overbent this thing. To use my jet boat to bend it back to a 90. Yeah, that's about right. Now keeping with the overall cheese theme of this build, I decided to add a baffle to the gas tank that resembles a piece of cheese. I want you to hold it like that while I weld it, okay? Bruh. Check that out guys, that couldn't have been any more perfect. It just misses the frame rail and fits in there really nice and snug. Always room for improvement though. So I have this flange right here that I got from eBay and this fits right up to the Hayabusa fuel pump and then it's gonna get welded on the bottom of the tank. Um, but I'm gonna worry about that a little bit later. I wanna go ahead and bend out a roll cage, tie into this uh, aluminum support right here. Now I talked a lot about reinforcing the aluminum frame rails and here's how I'm going to do it. So often when you need strength in the chassis you just add more triangles. This is 8th inch so I'm going to try out HTP's double pulse feature and you'll notice that the welder makes an entirely different sound. And the whole purpose is just to minimize blow through, more heat control and thinner metals.
Okay, so the question is, how am I going to weld the other side? the roll hoop I'm gonna weld on a little ledge right here and we're gonna have a stainless steel plate that bolts onto it you know it's probably not the strongest place to put that piece but I'm gonna tie it into that piece and then also into that frame rail right there All right, so at this point, there's no going back. We got these things welded in there. I tell you what though, these tube clamps do make it very easy to cope the joints up in. So now we're gonna go ahead and bend our hoop and it'll go right into these clamps and we're probably gonna weld these clamps solid. So I decided since the car is getting pretty heavy, you could say, Nearing 1100 pounds, I'm going to start using chromoly and DOM for the cage. I do need to add a hardness bar, but this is where I'm not sure what to do because ideally you'd want to add it at the widest point. So it's at the strongest point, but the hardness bar is going to have to be right here. So I don't know if I add, just add two bars because I do want to have an X cross brace going up, you know, like that to give it kind of like a time attack style. All right, so I got these blanks in for the axles and they're going to get welded onto these. Uh spline collars here. I have to take these to the machine shop to uh, get the sprocket to be pub centric. at my buddy's place and I just machined a little groove for the sprocket to sit flush and uh, it's only about 30 thousandths but that should be enough all right and that's going to be a wrap for this video guys I'm going to be continuing the roll cage and the chassis stiffening in the next episode as well as um, configuring out the rear drivetrain and after that all we have left is the cooling system and then we could just start 
slapping this thing together and getting it driving. So with that being said, guys, I have to catch you next episode. Stay tuned. Peace. God bless.